My name is uh, Milton Bertrand. I am a proponent of uh, science, uh, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So I'm joined today with Adi Muthi, and I thank you very much uh, for coming. Adi. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. So I have heard uh, good things about you, but simply I do not know exactly if the general audience, uh, basically the Gislers, know about you. And I would like uh, to conduct an interview with you today, so therefore you can tell uh, the rest of the world who you are and <laughs> what your plans are. So, you have accomplished some good things in your life. Uh, you clinched the championship of the 22nd National Geography B in 2010. On March 28, 2013, you found to have a perfect score on the SAT. The Pinellas County team participated in the State Commissioner's Academic Challenge in April 2013 and won the State Division I championship. For many, you are considered not to be a very bright, smart person. How do you respond to that, charge? That's from the perspective which you look at. From a perspective of some, I may be seen as a very smart person, but personally, I, am, I know for a fact that there are so many people who are much smarter than me. Take, for example, Albert Einstein. I am nothing in comparison to him. So and similarly, there are many people who are much smarter than me, who I'm nothing in comparison to. So it's all based on your perspective. In my perspective, I'm still nothing. All right. So I thank you for that answer. So I'm sure that this is on the person I'm listening to you out there. <laughs> uh, beside academic life, you are also a good singer. So how do you balance that life and stay on top of your game academically? Well, it is a challenge, but I manage my time and I make sure that I sing at least an hour a day. At least an hour a day. And I sing South Indian classical music. It is also known as Carnatic music. So it's a different type of music than what you might be aware of. But I make sure that I take a lot of lessons from my teacher and I also practice at least an hour a day and also including all the other things in my schedule. Okay, so uh, I do know uh, this summer, uh, 2013, uh, you are conducting research here at uh, the University University of South Florida. Uh, could you please uh, give us a small uh, description of uh, the research that you are doing and also the potential applications of your research? About 1,000 watts of solar energy falls on each square meter of the Earth's surface. So, if we could just harness such a large amount of energy which comes on each square meter, especially since we're in South Florida, Florida, so much sunlight, can't we harness that energy to power the world? Well, the answer is we do not have the capability to store that much energy. The, the energy crisis is an energy storage crisis. We are unable to store that much energy. So coming to the project, that the research that I'm conducting here at USF, it primarily focuses on thermal energy storage. We are attempting to store thermal energy, especially at a range of around 700 degrees Celsius. This is for applications in, in for a nuclear power plant and for uh, other uh, uh, high temperature applications because in nuclear power plants a lot of heat energy is just wasted dissipated into the environment so our uh, project here is to store that e extra thermal energy through salts through the phase change of salts salts going from solid to liquid absorb okay. energy when they're seen changing phase okay so in our project we are trying to choose the best salt and encapsulate it in a way that it's able to effectively store energy at around 700 degrees C for potential applications in improving nuclear facility uh, nuclear facility efficiencies up by up to 50 percent. So this is very important for helping solve the world energy crisis that is looming on humanity in this generation. So therefore, uh, your research is not going to waste. And so therefore, there are many uh, applications for your research. 
so that is a uh, good news uh, so therefore so do you think uh, this research uh, will be available in the next uh, 10 15 years or do you you do not know um how long that may be i think it will be available pretty soon but right. this is basically an arpa e project okay so it's a three year project so it'll be available pretty soon i believe okay so uh, you decided uh, to come on uh, to USF uh, uh, this summer uh, to do research. Uh, what made you come on uh, to USF? Uh, why USF? Why not other uh, universities uh, for the summer? Well, one thing is, USF is in my backyard. I am from South Florida. Another thing is, not many people know the amount of research that goes on in USF. The amount of quality research. When most of us think of research, we usually think of the big name institutions such as Caltech, MIT, etc. But not many know about the quality of research that takes place at a small university that many think, such as yeah. USF. Alright, so uh, what you are basically saying here, USF does not have on the big name like uh, MIT and Caltech, but on the research is going on here at the university. Yes. So therefore, we have to let uh, the world know about uh, USF. Yeah, the last, <laughs> the <laughs> remaining thing to do is to publicize USF. Exactly. The amount of research okay. going on. So once uh, we publicize on uh, USF, so maybe USF uh, would be able uh, to step next uh, to these giants. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, I like that. So let's put USF on the map. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, one other question now that I have uh, for you, how do you find your fellow researchers here at USF? Well, most of my fellow researchers are PhD students. Well, all of them are, I'd say. <laughs> They're all PhD students. So it's, it's a great opportunity for me. I'm a high school student, a rising senior, going to Palm Harbor University High School in uh, Pinellas County. So this is a great opportunity for me to mingle with the PhD students. I actually hope that some of their knowledge and experience rubs off on me. Okay. <laughs> so if offered on a USF research um, in the near future, so will you accept or at this point now you are pretty much open for any other institution? Well, a research position at USF, that would be great. Since, as I said before, USF is in my backyard. And it's also a great research university. Not many people know about this. But it is a great research university. It has so many research opportunities. So uh, you just uh, mentioned uh, earlier that uh, you will be a senior in high school uh, for the 2000. 13 and 2014 school year. So after uh, you plan on to graduate in 2014, after graduation, what do you plan to study at the university? Well, I plan to study energy. This is what I want to do. The, I want to solve the energy crisis. I take it upon myself to solve the energy storage crisis. So I wish to study all I can about how I can solve this problem during my life. So, uh, do you have uh, a specific uh, institution at this point uh, you want uh, to attend? Well, I, I would like to attend any university, such as USF, that has great research going on in energy storage. So, uh, that is very good. Uh, so, I would like uh, so many of your answers. Uh, so, basically, uh, you want to go into uh, solving uh, the energy crisis so most likely you are going toward uh, chemical engineering, is that correct? Yeah, I guess. It may be chemical engineering or okay. it may be material science. Or it could be material, material science. science. So uh, interestingly enough, uh, you choose uh, one of uh, the STEM disciplines, uh, which is uh, science and technology, engineering, mathematics. So why uh, science and technology, engineering, mathematics in your eyes? Why not choosing uh, something else, like uh, could be English or something like that, because many business or something like that. So why STEM? Per se. Well, I want to make a tangible contribution to the world. Through science, technology, energy, and mathematics, I am able to make a tangible contribution to the world, especially in solving something that is looming over humanity currently, the energy, the energy storage crisis. I can only do that through STEM. Okay, so um, you want to do this through STEM, but now we are having a major problem in our society. Uh, Many uh, young kids in elementary school, uh, junior high, going on uh, to high school and beyond high school uh, college. So you are going to be a senior this year, uh, your last year as a senior. But how do you encourage others, especially your peers, 
uh, to get engaged in science and technology and engineering mathematics. It's all about how STEM is viewed. See, for, for let's start with elementary schoolers. In elementary school, everyone is interested in math, almost everyone. And in middle school, the numbers reduce a bit, but still a great deal of people are interested in math. But when come high school and college, nearly no one is interested in math. It may be, maybe it's because it's slightly hard for some people, but I believe it is because it's not being marketed properly. Science, technology, engineering, mathematics needs to be marketed in a way that improves how it's viewed in the community. Right now, no teenager wants to be known as a geek or a nerd. Or a nerd, exactly. Yes. But what we have to do is change perceptions towards geeks and nerds. We need to make it that geekdom is on par or greater than stardom. So we need to uh, we need to tell everyone that it's okay to be a geek. It's okay to be a nerd. That is the way. We need to market STEM better. Exactly. So that we can right now, the United States used to be one of the uh, at the four part, four fronts of science, technology, engineering, yeah, mathematics for, with the, the space race. Of our innovation. Yeah. So with, now we are lacking behind uh, countries like uh, India, China. So that is uh, creating many yeah, problems. Yeah. At the time of the space race in the 1960s, 70s. United States was at the forefront. We were we were getting the most innovations in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But now our economy has slowly gone to a service-based economy. But I believe that we need to we need to market STEM more in the United States so that we the United States can again get its hold back in the world in technology in the 21st century. So uh, basically, you are saying that uh, STEMers, uh, to some extent, are not doing a good job at marketing uh, their own field. So uh, I think uh, we need uh, to do more. So scientists, uh, engineers, and uh, we have uh, to become better marketers. That's so where diesel comes in. E exactly. Right. This is yeah. uh, what diesel comes in, and this is exactly why we have uh, to diffuse uh, the STEM disciplines uh, to the rest of the world, and uh, we have uh, to let people know that there is a platform for them. So if they are in search uh, for like-minded individuals, they can come on diesel. They can talk about uh, scientific uh, dis disciplines and things like that. So uh, this is a very interesting thing. So I always uh, believe that uh, the information about STEM is there. Simply, it is trapped and disconnected. So our job, my job, your job, and everyone else's job uh, specifically in the STEM disciplines, what we have to do is to uh, create a connection on track so therefore, we cannot diffuse our uh, STEM knowledge, STEM information in many ways. I totally agree with that. All right. Yes. So I uh, thank you very much uh, for your time. And it has been great, a great pleasure uh, to know you uh, as one of uh, the future Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't go that far. <laughs> but uh, it is a possibility, right? Because <laughs> all the possibilities, uh, to some extent, are endless. But uh, mm -hmm. thank you very much. It has been a great pleasure. It's Have been my pleasure as well. Talk so, to you. And uh, we are looking forward now to do this. Uh, so whenever you go to the big institution, uh, maybe USF or wherever the wind takes you, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.